Examination assignment two is done, or the oral hearings for, for many of you anyways. Um, me and John was in Beckert yesterday, had a bit of a problem with the power shortage. Uh, but I think that everybody that booked the time, uh, all, we also managed to, 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 to do those oral hearings. Um, and I would like to talk about uh, what comes next and how you who haven't finished exa exa examination, ex examination assignment two should should proceed. Um, and we will also uh, I will also discuss some some things that we noticed when looking at your code yesterday and uh, how to to solve those common issues. So st starting off with a re-examination, re if we go to uh, this one, I've, I've written a, a little bit about it in, as a news on the, on the front page, so you can read for yourself. But basically the, the first assignment, the HTML and CSS assignment, just hand it in and do a release, because when you do, uh, we will look at those uh, releases. However, it may take a couple of weeks or something like that, because um, yeah, we are <laughs> scheduled with other stuff as well. So, so we will try to, to look at them as fast as possible. For the second assignment, uh, there will be a new oral hearing. That one will probably be in the vicinity of three weeks. Um, approximately the week, same week as assignment three or the week after. Um, and it's the same assignment, so, so just keep on working with that assignment, uh, assignment two, uh, and we will have an oral hearing just like we did with uh, did yesterday. So, so basically, nothing more for you to know than just keep on working with assignment two. I would also like to stress the importance of of looking at the exercises. Uh, the exercises are. We, we've constructed them to to help or, and support you in in doing the, the uh, uh, um, examination assignments. So you should probably have a look at all of them. Uh, uh, I would recommend autocomplete for uh, the second assignment uh, and definitely the memory game for the third assignment because that is actually a part of, part of that assignment. So, so you need to do this anyway. Um, and so don't forget that uh, I also got a question during my examination and um, uh, I, I've noticed that question in Slack as well, so I will uh, address it for everybody. Uh, basically, it, it comes down to events. So, so when you are connecting an event inside a web component in the connected callback, um, that event could be hard to remove if you also want this to be referring to the um, to the class uh, inside of the event handler. So, so I will switch to code and we will have a look. So this is once again the Bartboard application. If you haven't looked at the Bartboard uh, demos, pause this video and, and, and do that first because they are really, really important to, 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 to grasp the concepts uh, going forward. Uh, but in this we have the web component, nothing strange about that. We have the connected callback in which it's good practice to, to connect your event listeners. In this case, the mouse down, the mouse up and the mouse leave. Uh, uh, we also have the disconnected callback uh, in which we are, it's also good practice to, to remove those event listeners. However, in modern browsers, this should really not be a problem. You shouldn't need to remove the event listeners. They should be removed automatically. But it's still a good practice if you connect, uh, set an event listener, you should also remove it when, when it's not, not needed anymore. And this one is called when, when the HTML element is removed from the page. Uh, okay, so the problem is, if we look at this one, for instance, the stop writing method. Uh, so when we click mouse or release the mouse button, we call this stop writing. Um, 
inside stop writing we are not doing anything more than clearing a timeout and to be able to clear the timeout we need the interval id that was set in the first place and it's present on on the instance of this object and we can reach that by by just typing this it will turns out it will work in this special case because this inside of the the, the uh, event handler will refer to whatever is setting the event handler in this case in this case it's this uh, however it could be this case that if we look at this code i have this p element for some reason we might want to set an um, um, set the event on the p element so it would be something like this this dot p dot add event listener i have a reference to the p element uh, in the constructor i think yeah here so we want to attach the event listener to the p element uh, on mouse up and then we're calling stop writing but now we will get a problem because this inside stop writing will reference this p element uh, okay, we, we could fix that actually by doing this. We could do a bind to this. That tells us that create a new function that will bind this to what this is outside and call this stop writing. So now this stop writing will be called with this pointing once again to the instance of the class. Well, perfect. Fixed everything. However, this one will... I said that this one will create a new function. So this is actually a totally new anonymous function. And since it's anonymous, we cannot reference that in the disconnected callback. So if we're doing this, this will just be ignored because we haven't an event handler set to the stop writing. We have it to, to the anonymous function that bind creates. Doesn't help if we do something like bind this here because that will only create another anonymous function so so they they don't match uh, there is a way around this we could if we like make this a two-liner uh, we could take this function and create a new name that function basically with this dot uh, on mouse up equals that one uh, so the new function is not anonymous anymore. We store it as a pri semi-private member of, of the object in on mouse up, and then we could just use that this dot on mouse up to uh, connect to our uh, um, uh, event handler, and we could do the same thing when we remove that one. So it will be something like that. And it, of course, it will say uh, underscore p there as well, like that. Uh, this will also work. So uh, this is kind of a solution if you if you you want this to ref reference the correct object and you want to be able to remove the event listener. Then we could, if we like, do something like equals. Uh, uh, events, I think we could do, okay, we start like this. That will be kind of the same thing. So we are using an anonymous function and an anonymous function, uh, oh, sorry, arrow function and an arrow fu function will bind automatically. Uh, so by this, we will do the same thing basically. Uh, just a shorter syntax and we could even replace that one with event because on uh, uh, the browser will send us event information and we can take that one as a parameter now we're not using it uh, but uh, oh sorry should have parentheses because now we want to call that one instead uh, we could of course send that event uh, to the stop writing uh, method as well but there is no use for it right now uh, so by this, you, you basically are able to, to uh, um, have this point in the right direction and, and also remove the event listener. Um, okay, so I have cinnamon bun, so I will eat that. Uh, that is not a good thing because then I need to be quiet. Well, mm -hmm. you'll have to do. Um, This was not a good idea.
Oh. <laughs> Some other things we noticed in uh, in the uh, assignment is that many of you are not complying with the code standard, uh, which you basically should, and you should do automatically because if you do an npm start, you should get errors if uh, you have some code errors. You will see that, for instance, this bracket is one space away from, from those uh, parentheses. If I were to do that, I would get an error saying, oh, you, you are not complying with the code standard. And if I save, it will fix this for me, basically. And I've done that by, by installing a plugin called uh, standard, uh, I think, it's called standard JS by some Chen. And I recommend you to install this one in, in Visual Studio because if you do, uh, Visual Studio will kind of show you those errors. However, everybody will not agree with me up upon showing linked errors when you code because they could be a distraction. However, when you hand the code in, it should be linted. It should be follow the code standard and the code standard is, is the standard JS uh, that we are using in the course. So install this one and then when you do you can go to settings uh, for Visual Studio, search for standard and you will find and click JavaScript standard and you have this auto fix on save. You can turn it on or, on or off if you like. I have it on. Uh, if I turn it off, go to Bartboard and do something wrong, like adding a semicolon and save, uh, you will see that when I build uh, using Webpack, I will get this exact same error in, in, in Webpack saying, oh, you're not complying with the standard. Uh, and then I need to remove that one, save, and it will rebuild and everything is fine. For the third assignment, uh, we you should comply with the code standard or you will get a, uh, you, you need to complement or, or fix that. Um, so please make sure you get this to work. Another thing that is uh, mandatory in the third assignment is using a JavaScript uh, docs, uh, JS docs, or comment your functions, basically. Uh, very few of you did. Uh, and um, um, I, I, I actually thought that, that many of you were taught to do that in Java, for instance, to use Java docs. Uh, however, we will need to, we, we're adding that as a requirement for the third assignment because so many of you forgot. So it's basically like Java docs for those of you who have used them. Um, you just, for a class, you can follow, follow this syntax. Uh, if you, I think you have actually a uh, uh, help in, in Visual Studio, if you, if you do like that, uh, well, this wasn't the function, but if I have a function called hello with a parameter called param1, turning a string like that, if I do something like that, press enter, I will get an automatically uh, filled comment, and then you can write what this function does. Uh, what uh, type of parameter are supposed to be sent in. In this case, it might be a string. Uh, returns, in this case, string um, uh, uh, test. Something like that. Uh, but, but just try to document all of your functions and classes. So let's move on to that uh, um, assignment then, because that is the next major thing happening in the course. And I would urge you all to start working with the third assignment right away, because that is quite a big assignment. Uh, there is a lot of things to do in that assignment. Um, and you, actually, don't sit and wait until next Wednesday to watch the next lecture in the course. I've already published lecture 9 and 10. They are new since last year. Uh, they are 2017 recordings. They are Accurate, accurate still, so, so just go ahead and watch them. Start this week. Watch the uh, offline and spa applications and the optimization and accessibility um, uh, lecture as well. Uh, I will not go to Vexia next, next week. I will focus uh, uh, my attention on, on 
uh, getting things up to speed. Uh, I will probably add uh, an extra uh, tutoring session uh, next Wednesday as well. So, so, so uh, look out for that. So look at those and then start coding on the assignment. You have it here. Everything is prepared. There is a recorded demo that you find here where you could uh, see how this application should work. You find the functional requirements here and you find the non-functional requirements that are updated here. For instance, yeah, I forgot to say this, but you should have a complete Git history and it should be present for the ass assessment. Uh, for this assignment, somewhere between 30 and 200 commits is normal. So it's really hard to say how many commits you should have, but it should not only be one, two or three commits with more or less the whole solution, we would like to be, a, we, we need to be able to see how your solution was um, created, uh, in which order you did stuff. So do it all the time, do a commit. I rather do, I, I, I would like you to do more commits than necessary, <laughs> rather than fewer uh, or less commits. Uh, so just go ahead and do commits, please. Uh, you should follow standard.js as, as I showed you in uh, Visual Studio Code. Um, all exported function classes and types should be commented, preferably using JavaScript docs, as I said as well. Uh, and the, the code should be organized in appropriate modules, at least four. So, so you should have modules. In, in this first assi uh, second assignment, many of you only had one file with all code in one file, and that would be way too much code in the file for, for, for the third assignment. So, so think about the assignment and how you could divide this into modules. If we look at this one, hope, Oops. sorry, okay, if we do it like that, um, you can see that this application is creating windows like this. And that would be one idea is to have a window as a component, and then you could fill this component with whatever you like. That is, that is one solution, and then you have a model called, or a module called a window module, or something, window object, or whatever. Um, maybe you should have one for the memory game, and for each and every application, and you can uh, connect those two together. But you should be able to, to work with modules, that's, that's my point. Um, yeah, and remember, remember, I, I, I will tell you once again, this is a big, big, uh, or big, big, it's not really huge, but it's quite a big application, so, so start working early. You will not complete this application during the last week or something like that. You need to start uh, right now. If you're not able to finish it this one in, <coughs> in time, it will be the same thing as with assignment two. You will have a retake or resubmission on this one later on uh, this fall. Okie doke. I think that's it. Good luck with the, the assignment. Mm -hmm.